Greetings again everyone, and isn't this just the smallest, neatest little macro lens you've ever seen? Yes, today I'll be reviewing the living daylight out of the Fuji XF 30mm f2.8 RLMWR macro. With its tiny size and full frame equivalent focal length of 45mm, this could be a perfect lens for general purpose use or street photography. Its maximum aperture is only f2.8, but on the flip side, it has a full macro capability. Now, most serious macro photographers tend to prefer a lens with a bit more reach than that, and at 30mm, you certainly have to get very close to your subject if you want a life-size macro image, potentially scaring off insects or small animals or make it tricky to light your subject. But the resulting macro images still look gorgeous, so it's a lens that'll make itself really handy on your camera. At 600 US dollars or 600 pounds here in the UK, it is not cheap, but it is intended to be a premium level optic here. I'd like to thank Fuji UK for loaning me a copy of this lens for a few weeks for testing, although as usual, this is a totally independent review. Build quality here is fantastic, as you'd expect for a top-of-the-line Fuji XF optic. Although it's made of plastic, the lens is beautifully small and solid, not to mention good-looking on your camera. The rear mount is metallic with a weather sealing gasket around it. In fact, the lens is advertised as being fully weather resistant. Then comes the aperture ring with lovely tactile clicks every third of an f-stop, and there's also quite a handy switch to allow you to lock the lens in or out of automatic aperture mode if you want. In front of that comes the manual focus ring, which is large, metallic, and turns beautifully smoothly. As usual for a Fuji lens, the actual manual focus response is a little jerky, but it is precise enough for anything you might want to do. The lens displays only a little focus breathing here, nothing anyone will ever notice in video work. In fact, this is a surprisingly good performance for a macro lens, they usually have serious problems here. Autofocus speed is very snappy, as you can see, and the autofocus motor runs silently and accurately. The lens has a very small 43mm filter thread size, and it comes with a dinky little plastic hood, and it does not have image stabilisation. Overall though, perfect build quality here. So let's take a look at image quality. Fuji were kind and also brave enough to loan me one of their latest 40 megapixel cameras for this test, an X-T5. So let's see what the lens can do on the world's most insanely demanding APS-C camera sensor. At f2.8, image quality is perfect straight away in the middle, excellent sharpness and contrast. The corner image quality is reasonably sharp, but contrast gets a bit ghostly here. However, stop down to f4 and contrast makes a fighting comeback, and at f5.6, sharpness is excellent now from corner to corner. The lens stays this sharp down to f16, where diffraction introduces a lot of softness. Overall, considering the somewhat ridiculous demands of a 40 megapixel APS-C sensor, this is a great performance. The lens is seriously sharp, but stop down to f5.6 if you want perfect sharpness right in the image corners. Ok, let's see about the lens's distortion and vignetting, if corrections are turned off. Here we see the lens has a heavy pinch of pincushion distortion, and the corners look quite dark at f2.8. At f4, f5.6 and f8, those corners brighten up. Still, this is clearly an optic designed from the ground up to use corrections, so make sure your raw files are being corrected. The lens's minimum focus distance of only 10cm is of course its star feature here, but as I mentioned, that closeness can make it difficult to focus and to light your subject. Anyway, at f2.8, close-up image quality remains nice and sharp. F4 and F5.6 see an extra little punch of contrast though. At F8, diffraction is beginning to slightly soften the image. F11 and F16 are looking a little jumbled up and F22 looks really soft. Still a very good macro performance here. Ok, let's see how the lens performs against bright light now. As usual for a Fuji lens, it's an excellent show. Almost no flaring can be seen here at all. Now let's see about the quality of this lens's bokeh. The maximum aperture of f2.8 unfortunately doesn't allow for very out of focus backgrounds here. When you do get them, the lens displays a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde personality. Deeply out of focus backgrounds look nice and smooth, but at portrait distance, backgrounds look rather busy. 
And finally, related to Bokke comes longitudinal chromatic aberration. It's low at f2.8, and at f4, it's essentially gone. Overall, this is a neat, handy, small, sharp, wider angle macro lens, with beautiful build quality and excellent optics that could make itself very useful to anyone who, well, anyone who's really into wider angle macro lenses. And that's not everyone. The big fly in the ointment is the lens's hefty price tag of $600, which is a little crazy to be honest. It's clearly a very high quality lens, but I think a lower price would be needed to really tempt people. Cost aside though, if you're not worried about the price, I can recommend the lens without any hesitation. Fuji, Fuji, Fuji. You know what? I've been loving testing Fuji lenses on an X-T5. It's an absolutely phenomenal camera, so much better than my X-T3, and I can't believe so many of these Fuji lenses are actually sharp enough to cover 40 megapixels. Anyway, a huge thank you goes out to my supporters over on Patreon. Without you, I don't know if I'd be able to keep this channel going. Check it out in the description below. Patreon supporters get all kinds of extra bonus content. Ciao for now, everyone.